Okay, I got the linear rails and the heated bed uh, successfully installed on my Anycubic Castle printer and everything's working great. So this is video number two. If you missed part one, uh, you can watch it right here, but you don't have to. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Um, but I will ask if you would please support me. Click all the buttons down below and uh, maybe consider donating to my Patreon page. But uh, we'll get more into why you would want to do that at the end of the video. Um, right now let's just take a look at this thing uh, rotating and also take a look underneath it. You see this blower? It sucks cool air in through this slot and blows it over the board. Now the hotter air from the board can exhaust any old which way. Also there's the cork that we saw in the last video which insulates the board from the heat coming off of the um, hot bed on the other side. So between the cork and the blower, the board and this whole space in there is kept nice and cool. Taking a look at the power supply here, I've mounted it to the aluminum extrusion using these two brackets that I made out of PETG, printed those out of PETG, and those just attached to the extrusion with the regular M4 T-nuts, the ones that I took out of the slots down here near the bed. We can see the custom cover that I've made. It's got an on-off switch and a detachable uh, power cord. So these components were stolen from a broken power supply from a PC. And I made this part um, based on a, uh, another bit of geometry that I got off of Thingiverse. I've had that print stuck to the bed the whole time I've been presenting today. And I just popped it off so that I could install the bolt into the hole on the tower. Now that bolt is an M3 by 40 millimeter long bolt and it threads into the hole without tapping the hole. You just thread it into the plastic and everything works fine. So for those of you who saw the previous video, you'll know that this is a replacement uh, bracket for the design that I first came up with. Now that first design had collision problems with this part of the end effector. When the end effector was slid all the way to the edge there, it would collide with this, uh, this portion of the tower right here at the top of the bolt right there. Um, so with this lower design, you won't get that collision anymore. Now, uh, the design that's currently on there has these metal tabs, and those are a pain in the butt to make. But this is really low profile, so uh, maybe you could consider it the better design, but it's really not worth the effort to make those tabs. This will do just fine. So I redrew that, and then hopefully anybody else who wants to uh, go through these modifications has a, a nice working bracket. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at why you need a heated bed. So I have this long skinny print. Now this is just a uh, test bar that I've, a file that I've created uh, for this purpose, just for testing uh, this printer. And what's going to happen is we're going to get this first layer down and after it prints this first layer, uh, once it gets into the second layer, the, uh, the whole thing's going to start peeling up uh, just right up off the bed. So let's just wait a second for that to happen. So we're doing okay at this end, but let's take a look at that uh, far end there. Whoa, what's going on over here? If we look now, uh, it's also peeling at this end. As you can see, that's, that's just not sticking. I mean, that's not sticking at all. For contrast, let's take a look at that exact same print, but this time we'll do it on the heated bed. So it's currently in progress and we are now printing uh, into the second layer. So this is when the uh, the first printer failed, or the first print on the cold bed failed. So if I if I do this, we can see that the uh, print bed is about 90 degrees. Uh, that's on the actual surface. The thermistor thinks it's 98 degrees. And yeah, it's printing just fine and it's uh, remaining stuck down to the bed. It's not doing any of that peeling uh, which we saw during the cold print. So I'm just going to let this print finish out and put this on time lapse and we can watch uh, this little bar print without peeling. The bed has cooled down and it is now 46 degrees. And we're going to see how easy it is to, uh, to get this off the bed uh, 
once it's cooled down. So I'm gonna try grabbing it with my fingers here and I just can't, oh, there we go. I can make that happen. There we go. So it's just that easy, you guys. Now, if that didn't work, I could have just uh, stuck the knife under there. That's pretty cool when it sticks that well so you don't get any peeling and um, you can just pull it off with your hand. So I call that a complete success. Uh, love the heated bed here. Okay, looking at the final wiring for the board, this is the blower that keeps the board cool and it is wired into the center fan slot. The first fan slot here gets the, uh, the J head fan and this is goes to the, um, the parts cooling fan. So this is your uh, heated nozzle wiring. That is another heated nozzle slot, which we do not have a second heated nozzle, so we just leave that empty. This goes to your, uh, your bed, your heated bed, and that's why it's thicker gauge of wiring. Now that is also where you would wire in uh, your signal for the MOSFET or for your solid state relay if you're going to use one of these. This block here is the 11 amp power block and it receives the thick gauge wire from the power supply. This is the 5 amp power block and it also receives 12 volt supply from the power supply. But this block here is what powers the board. So if you don't have something plugged in there, you won't be able to turn your board on unless you plug the original power supply into uh, the back side of, of the printer. So what you want to do is wire uh, this stepper motor into this position. And this stepper motor here goes into the next one down and then this stepper motor goes into that far one. And that is the correct way so that your this is your Y axis and this is your X axis. So as you're looking at the printer it's lined up the way that a typical printer would be lined up because if you get those rotated then your your prints aren't going to be situated the way that you expect. Now let's talk about the linear rails. So Right here on the screen, I'm going to put uh, the technical name, MCN, H block, something like that, <laughs> of these uh, linear rails and bearing blocks. Uh, you will also find that information in the description down below. So that is just for your convenience, you know what part you need to go buy if you want to do this upgrade. But you absolutely do not need to do this upgrade and it's kind of a waste of money. There's no difference in quality between the linear rails and the sort of pulley carriages that came uh, with the printer originally. So these original pulley carriages are actually quieter in motion. So my printer is a little bit louder now. And so why would you do it? Why would you do the upgrade? Well, the only reason to do the upgrade is if you wanna put uh, this whole printable area into an enclosure. And that enclosure can get pretty hot. So I was worried, and I still am, about these um, these plastic parts sort of getting too soft and failing in the heat. So that is why I did the upgrade. But unless you plan to fully enclose your printer, uh, don't waste your money. Save your $75. Let's take a closer look at these M3 T-nuts that I had to buy in order to install the, uh, the linear rails. Now these are really nice. Uh, you can see the knurling on the... Um, on the actual T profile and you can also see this rounded uh, corner here. Now what that rounded corner does is it allows you to stick this into the slot and then spin it in the slot and seat it correctly. So um, there's no need to take apart your entire frame when you need to remove uh, these this style of T-nut. Now in contrast we can look at the uh, the T-nuts that came with the printer. That's this style right here. and um, these are just a, you can just see the length of bar that's been drilled and tapped. So you are required to take apart the whole printer if you want to remove these, just like I did in the last video. Um, so going back to, uh, to this style, I think it's well worth it to uh, purchase an entire set of these um, in the M4. So this is an M3 right here, but we need the M4s. And I would assemble the whole frame if I had it to do all over again using this style of T-Knight. It's just going to make your life... Uh, that much easier. Now there are a few odds and ends that I should report on and the first is the time to get the bed up to temperature. Now with this setup to get the bed up to 100 degrees takes like I don't know 10 minutes? It's a long time and how can you decrease that time? Well the best answer would be to double the voltage on your power supply and use a 24 volt power supply and that would get it hot really quick. 
But in order to do that, you would need to get one of these units. This is a uh, MOSFET unit, or you would need to get a solid state relay unit. Either one allows you to bypass the control board and feed 24 volts directly from the power supply into the bed while being controlled by the main control board. Um, you can also use these units with your 12 volt power supply and hopefully heat up the bed a little bit quicker, but uh, you know, it doesn't work that well. I want to tell you guys about uh, this belt. So I don't think you're going to have this problem if you get this printer. Uh, this is kind of a fluke for me. Um, the belt has a thick moment in it, just where the, where the, just the thickness of the belt just sort of footballs, it just gets a little bit wider. And you wouldn't even notice, it's perfectly flexible. On all the other machines that I have, uh, it wouldn't be an issue. But on this machine, the belt gets fed through a, uh, a groove. And so if you watch, see it gets stuck right there. So I can't move it down. If I apply a lot of force, it will squeeze through, but it's just, uh, it's not good. So hopefully you guys won't have that problem, but if you do, do like I'm doing and just get yourself a new belt and problem solved. Now, there are a few issues with installing the linear rails. And the first is that you need to clean them thoroughly. These are cheap components coming from China and they don't bother to give them a good cleaning. So put your uh, solvent on there or your cleaning solution, or um, I'm sorry, your, your lubricating solution. I used some bicycle lubricant and that has a solvent in it and we'll just get them nice and clean and lubricate them at the same time. So uh, the other thing is when you do install them, you need to install them all the way until they hit the end stops up here. Now you can see I have a gap and that's a problem. So one of my bearing blocks, the little retainer wire is slightly bent so that the, uh, the little ball bearings can fall out of that one. So when it's on the track, there's no issue, but as soon as you slide it off the track, ball bearings can fall off. Now, if you'll notice on this, uh, if I slide this to the top, my bearing block shows just ever so slightly above the track. And that's just enough room for bearings to start falling out. So here I have, what, seven little bearings that fell out and hopefully I found all of them because uh, maybe the bike shop will carry this size of bearing, but who knows, I might need to buy a new block. Uh, so don't make that mistake, uh, just mount your rails all the way to the top. So speaking of sizing and the rails, when you do install these rails, you need to adjust your uh, radius, your delta radius in your firmware. So these blocks, uh, the original carriages that were, uh, that were installed on the, on the uh, printer, sit um, outboard 1.2 millimeters compared to the uh, linear rail. So that means if your printer software was working fine with these carriages, you need to decrease that by 1.2 millimeters to get the, your correct print to happen. Uh, after you've installed the rails. Oh, and speaking of software, I have installed Marlin 1.1.4. Uh, that is the latest release of Marlin. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Marlin is a community-driven open source uh, software, and it just gets better and better every time I download it. So uh, the version of Marlin that comes with your printer on the SD card is ancient, like don't even use it. You can get a newer version that's like a year old, um, and that's downloadable from the Anycubic um, Google Drive, but even that one is, is, is quite out of date. So this latest version has quite a few bells and whistles baked into it. Uh, like I said, it just gets better and better. But I could not have accomplished this install without uh, the help of Michael Zerillo. So thanks, Michael. Um, you know, it's just out of my depth. I'm, I'm no slouch when it comes to Arduino programming, but uh, there's a lot of files to keep track of, and there's a lot of um, like architecture to that software that it was sort of escapes me. So um, thank you to Michael. I have a working uh, version of that software. And if you want to get your hands on that build, uh, you need to go to my Patreon page and obviously link in the description uh, and donate $5 or more. And for that donation, I'm going to give you the software, all of the STL files and any other pertinent information uh, to help you accomplish all of the upgrades that I've uh, done in these two videos. And that just about does it for this video. Uh, stay tuned. Next time, we're going to be going over how you manually calibrate uh, your Delta printer, specifically the, uh, the Anycubic Castle printer. Um, yeah, so it should be a good video. Uh, before you go, please, you know, click on all the good buttons down below and help me out. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time. If you like videos about 3D printing, I've got a few more. Go watch them.